most valuable assets that I created for myself as a teacher is my website. And I did create this years ago before districts uh, began to offer websites for teachers. So uh, my site is drnewfeld.com and I've quite a bit here on display. First of all, again, uh, based on our unit zero, we've been talking about time frames around the world. So I put this on my home page. I have, um, I should select different areas around the world so we can uh, check dates and times. I also put uh, a picture from one of my trips. I change this picture every day so the kids know when I've updated my website. In this case, it's the Taj Mahal in India. I also have a map here that shows the places I've been for my students. And then I have our Team USC students, our 150 students on our team. Now, this is from a couple years ago, the last time we had students on site together. But when you click this site, it takes you to our team site, and this is where I list the teachers on our team, and I have four students. So visit my website, a link to the teacher email and their own websites. So going back to the home page, the, um, the bar here has all of the other pages on my website. Again, these change every day. Daily updates I keep all year long, update every day. Geography I keep all year long. The next icons I keep while we are studying that unit. Right now we're on the Roman Empire. When we're done, after uh, a couple weeks, I do um, eliminate this and I put I, our next unit on here. So uh, Asia, Africa, Islam, etc. will be here. And then I have another icon for our team, USC. So daily updates. I still have this on my website for any on who would like to visit this. This is back to school night because this year we did not have a back to school night. I offered to show my parents, um, created a video of what our back to school night usually is. This is when they would visit my classroom. And usually I have about, I think it's 11 minutes when a teacher uh, briefs the student, uh, the parents on what you're going to be teaching for the year, etc. So I did videotape that, and that's what I have here for the parents to see. Since they're not visiting the classroom, I also created this three-minute video so the parents can see where their kids are uh, in my, when their kids are in my room at school. So, But I also asked the teachers to give me feedback on these two videos, and that's when I really learned how um, much students this year are glad to be back at school, and so many of them like history this time. So I left that posted for anybody who would still like to see this. Podcast is everything, uh, all the assignments I've given each and every day. So this is what really helps me when a kid is absent. All they have to do is look on my podcast. I have a link here for our Power School, for Google Classroom, to email me, to Zoom, etc. for our team website. But um, here is the latest, and then it goes backwards to the very first day of school. So whenever kids are absent, it makes it very easy for them to catch up on work. And, for example, here we were... Um, studying the Roman Empire and the beginning of Christianity. Here was a Google form assignment about reading the text and answering the questions. Here is our Cornell notes for the day before. Here was based on Monday when I gave our geography assignment. In this case, the geography assignment is still on paper. Uh, it could be on Google Classroom. I didn't like how it worked though last year. So these are one of the few assignments that are still on Google Classroom, but this goes all the way back to the beginning of the school year. Okay, then next is agenda. This is what you've seen already when I post the agenda that kids write down their homework assignment from here. I post this and change it every day on uh, what my website. Now, spiral table of contents. This is... Uh, uh, what I learned uh, quite some time ago at a conference I went to in San Diego at an AVID conference about students and organize and organization and keeping um, keeping assignments in order. This is when most assignments are on paper, but I'm still using this. This is our table of contents of the assignments we've had on the Roman Empire. 
It makes it easier for me when I number every assignment rather than just give titles. Uh, page number is the page in the spiral notebook, and you can see we've only had two on paper so far. All the others are on a computer. That's what the PNC stands for here, paper or Chromebook. Uh, due date and total points possible. Students, later when they turn this in, they tell me what they believe their score is on the assignment, and then I grade it and give them to them. But I've made uh, many videos throughout the year, again, to help explain to students who are absent what we did in class. This uh, video is a review of what it takes to get a good grade on the spiral notebook. And this one is how do we create our spiral notebook? Where do we put our table of contents? How do we draw the lines? So again, putting in videos so that kids who are absent can watch these is much easier than me trying to explain it every time a kid is absent. Here is one on uh, when you turn in a spiral, I give a checklist on things you're supposed to look at before they bring in their spirals. That's a video about that. This is also good for the parents to watch. So that's a spiral TFC. A uh, handbook planner we uh, used uh, two years ago. This is for the team. Going over um, documents for the beginning of year, standards and expectations for each teacher, course syllabus, etc. So that was more for the beginning of the year. Proofreader's marks, very important. I learned this as a high school student, so I use proofreader's marks. So whenever I'm writing on paper, when I grade a spiral, uh, I have students review it so they know what the marks mean that I make on their spiral notebook. Then uh, care cash or rewards we give our team. These are care cash rewards I, can, I sell to the kids when they... Uh, when they want the purchase, when they have certain um, amounts of care cash. So I really like this. I'm able to always give rewards to students, but we use this as a team and as our school. Uh, Google Keep and Class Dojo. This is more for parents at the beginning of the year. Uh, Google Keep is for kids on how to log in their um, assignments. We use this as a team. Class Dojo is communication with parents. Fantastic way to communicate with parents. I think most of you probably know about Class Dojo already. Uh, extra credit. I post different assignments there throughout the year because kids are always looking for extra credit. Some of these are video games, especially with geography, latitude, and longitude, etc. So there's what I've posted so far. Another way to get extra credit is comics and history. I love reading the newspaper and the comics. So I tell kids whenever they see anything related to anything we're studying in world history, cut it out, give it to me. I'll give them extra credit and post it on my website. So these are comics related to different things that we've uh, studied that students have given me over the years. Then this is our uh, unit zero on geography. This is when I post the lecture notes. And for this unit here on Roman numbers, so this was the slideshow that I gave to the student explaining how Roman numbers work. Give me back in history. Now students do take notes on this. This again is an important skill to learn to be ready for high school and college is note taking. So students take notes and then we did some practice. Again important is how we take the past and we use it in the present. This is an example. Now, I've also included a couple videos that I found on YouTube, but I have my own video that I created on how we figure out Roman numbers. So again, this is really helps when students are absent. There's some fantastic other things here that I posted. For example, BC and AD on a timeline. This is how we put dates on a timeline. I've made two videos about that, but here's my lecture notes and how it's changed from BC to... BCE and AD to CE, and then several videos to help students go through this exercise. So this was uh, my unit zero, latitude and longitude, cardinal and ordinal numbers, bodies of water. Now this also helps with geography because as you've seen, the geography quiz at the end of the year has 150 locations. As the year goes on, one way to help kids learn locations is songs. So here are different video clips with songs uh, about remembering geography, video clips, and uh, music. So kids can use that to help them 
with their geography. Now, right now we're on our unit about the Roman Empire. First, I put a trailer for our reward film at the end. This is so parents can see what the film is about, that I have a permission slip. Uh, the um, students have to get to watch this film. But uh, I think in 25 plus years of teaching, there's only been one or two parents who have withheld, and I understand 100% why, so I honor that. Uh, here are the old-fashioned, or on our previous textbook, lecture notes, Cornell notes, are notes that we would take as students. I would show them how to take notes, condense information from a book, now we're on a new textbook this year, a National Geographic, so much shorter, but students are learning how, again, to take notes and make, uh, write down important points having to do with who, what, when, where, and why. So these are notes on the National Geographic. So again, this is our unit on the Roman Empire. I switched this uh, for each unit that we are on. So this is my website. What has really helped me are video clips that I put on to help students when they are absent, but particularly here, podcast, agenda, and spiral TFC, always up to date every day. So uh, creating my own website was a great asset for me to use as a teacher in the classroom.